What's going on? Welcome. You're tuned in to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 798, with my guest today, Kevin M. Becky Bartlett. We have a wonderful conversation. It's going to go in places you never even imagined. My God, I had no idea. I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I founded Whistlekick and this show because I love traditional martial arts. I love training and I love traditional martial artists, folks like you, people who, frankly, I believe are better versions of themselves and across the board, just generally better people. And that's why we do what we do here at Whistlekick. Our mission is to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. Because if we do that, it gets people training and it keeps people training. And if you're at all like me, you recognize that even six months of martial arts training makes someone better and has lifelong benefits. And what better way to give back to the world than that mission? If you want to see all the things we're doing in pursuit of that mission, whistlekick.com is the place to go. You're going to find all kinds of great stuff over there. And a lot of that stuff is in the store. Yeah, we do sell some things, but if you use the code podcast15, you're going to save 15% off what I believe to be already reasonable prices. Did you know we make the best sparring gear in the world? Yeah, you can buy that there too. And you can save 15% off. The show gets its own website because there's just so much going on. We do two episodes a week, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And you're going to find every single episode we've ever done. You're going to find transcripts, which makes it easy to search. You're going to find photos and videos and links to guest social media, websites, all kinds of cool stuff in there. So if you find an episode, you're like, man, I, I really felt like this episode made an impact. I know some of you listen to episodes multiple times. If you're finding that much value in one of these episodes, go check out what the guest has to offer. Check out their Instagram, their Facebook, their website. A lot of them are, have welcomed people to email them and stay in touch. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay? These, are, these are folks like you and I. They love martial arts. They love training. You know, if you love all this stuff that we're doing for you, well, maybe you want to tell a friend about us. That's a thing that I'd really appreciate. Reach out right now. Press pause. Tell somebody, hey, have you checked out the latest episode of Martial Arts Radio? You could also... I don't know, submit a guest. I bet you know someone that we haven't had on the show that would be an awesome guest. Or you could contribute to our Patreon for as little as two bucks a month. You ever thought, hey, you know, sometimes I, I hear these acknowledgements that there's a guest coming up. I'd kind of like to know who's coming. It would help me kind of plan because maybe you listen to a lot of podcasts and you're choosy about which ones you listen to and when. Well, guess what? $2 will get you all that information. Who's coming up on the show? And often, what topic episodes are we doing? $5 gets you a bonus audio episode. $10 gets you bonus video. $25 a month gets you every book we ever make in digital form, of course, as well as quite a few training programs. And at the upper tiers, you get the choice of training with me or joining our school owner's mastermind, which is awesome and uh, tax deductible. So there you go. If you want all the things that you could do to help us out, if our mission resonates for you, whistlecake.com slash family is the place to go. And we even post exclusive bonus content in there. Whistlecake.com family. If you're family, you should be checking that out. We update it weekly. Now, today's guest, Becky. Calvin M. Becky Park. Our conversation starts in this, this kind of interesting way, not, not a not a common story, but not an uncommon story. And then it changes and it continues to change. And yet it is a martial arts story through and through. And this is one of my favorite things about martial arts radio and the format we have is that we get to dig into what it is that our guests do with their martial arts. This is an episode, I don't think we've had one like and I love that. I love that here we are knocking on the door of 800 and we still have new stories to tell. I don't think that's ever going to change. So enjoy and I'll see you on the other side. Hello. Hey there. How are hey. you? Doing well, Jeremy. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> I, you're, you're two of four. It's a great day. We're just cranking wow. along. Yeah. How, how often, how many do you usually have in a day? Is that about right? Well, we record, we, we aim for four every three weeks. And that way we, you know, inevitably something happens, somebody has to reschedule or something. So it keeps us pretty good. 
to yeah. do that. And it means I get to focus and just do this for one day and keep my mind in this this place. Works yeah. pretty well. Well, good, good. Glad to hear that. Where are you? Where are you out of? Where are you located? I'm in. I'm in Vermont. Okay. How Very about you? Cool. I know no one in Vermont. <laughs> well, now you do. Now you know. Me. <laughs> now I do. You're my one. <laughs> I'm in Arkansas. Okay. And I've moved around a bunch, but that's where I am now. So right. yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I think you might be the second person I know in Arkansas. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm number two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Can't be number uh, one. It's okay. Well, hey, you know, just because you're not first doesn't mean you're not number one. <laughs> right. Today I'm number one. That's all that At, matters. Without a doubt, especially <laughs> right now. All that right. matters. <laughs> Uh, so, so we have a decision. I'll leave it to you. We can either just plow in and I just keep the recording rolling, or if you want, we can kind of, you know, sort of hit the pause button and chat about what's going to happen. I'm great with plowing in. I actually Good. don't know what's going to happen, but I'm fine. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Honestly, I don't either. We just chat yeah. and see where it takes us. Both so let's, surprised. let's, let's start here. And one thing I'll, I'll, prime you with the audience knows this tangents are not only uh welcome but encouraged oh yeah i'm a queen okay of so perfect totally great Rabbit so hole. i might i might take a nap turn off the screen and just let you talk <laughs> like, where is she get, going? <laughs> we, get, we have to start somewhere and this being a martial arts show and i know it's going to spider off into some some interesting subjects but we've got to start in a martial arts context and what better way to start than the beginning so when did you start training Okay. Yes. I started training, um, right after I had my third and final child. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so a little bit older than the average person. I, I am. So my story might be a little unique in that Great. I didn't, I wasn't raised with martial arts. In fact, I'll say this, I did have a wonderful, loving family, but I had a very casual family in terms of anything disciplined. Um, mm. I tried every sport, I tried lots of instruments and, you know, as soon as my fingers started hurting on the violin or the guitar, you know, I'm like, I don't want to do this. Like, okay. <laughs> you know, my, my parents are great, but that was just the mentality. It's like, okay, well, you can try it. And if, if something sticks, great. And so I, because of that, I I'm exposed to tons of things, but I never really mastered any of them. And, um, you know, and I, went on to college. I, I got into marketing and, um, then I became a stay at home mom mm -hmm. and I have three beautiful daughters and my sister, I'm going to jump to this. Now my sister lives several States away. She lives in um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. She and her boys started doing Taekwondo mm -hmm. when, um, I hadn't had my third yet. It wasn't, yeah, I wasn't even pregnant with her yet. But anyway, so, um, my youngest heard that and said, I want to do that too. And, and we hadn't done anything like that before. And so I didn't have any intentions of pursuing martial arts at all. I just thought, oh, that's cute. I'll put my little four-year-old <laughs> in this Taekwondo class and, and that'll be something cute that she can have in common with, you know, my sister and her, her cousins who live so far away. And, um, she, she really liked it. And she, it's funny because she's very, uh, uh introverted mm. and, was something that surprised people about her is that she could get out there and do the little, eh, eh, you know, the kicks and the punches. And it was adorable. Um, again, I had no, no sights for myself um, until after I had my third and final child and um, master. So is uh, the master at golden dragon Taekwondo in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is where I was living at the time. Uh, he started a ladies class. And um, he had already had an adults class, but specifically he he wanted to see if he could help get that demographic interested. And um, so he said, well, why don't you just come to a class for free and just check it out? And my doctor had just given me the green light to start doing, you know, any kind of exercise again. I mean, like literally I had just had my baby. Mm. And, um, and so I checked it out on a Saturday and not expecting anything, but there was something about making that kick and impact and the yell that you're encouraged to do, which is a little out of my comfort zone at the time. I was like, oh my goodness, this is different. This is so different than just working out on a treadmill or, you know, all, and it's, it's the skill. And 
um, some little fire was lit inside of me. Um, so I started kind of coming back and before I signed up, he let me try it again for free. And <laughs> anyway, so I started doing that. I literally raised my children on the mat. Mm. Like they would come to school and then my little baby, she was, she'd just be in her little car seat. And then I eventually I'd bring the pack and play. <laughs> and thankfully my master was very sweet about that. And so, and you could ask the other moms too. I mean, she'd be like chunking her toys out us at the mat and, you know, standing up from the back and play. <laughs> and I'm thankful that he was gracious in that area because I wouldn't have been able to do that otherwise, but I was able to train, uh, take off my mom hat for a moment and step on the mat, which I'm sure you're aware of. It's like the world goes away and you focus and, um, that was the first time in my life I, I ever experienced anything like that. And it's so healthy. It's so good to kind of compartmentalize different parts of your life and do something for yourself too, so that I could give, give back and be a good, you know, mom and wife and all that good stuff. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how it started. There's a lot more to that, but that's, that's my rambling beginning. So that gives us a pretty good introduction to how you got started. And I, I can absolutely see the image of, of your youngest in the pack and play in the back of the room. I mean, I've trained with with dogs wandering through, uh, babies crawling through, you know, and, and right. uh, just, just becomes another obstacle that we need to avoid and, and remain aware while we're training, right? Very true. What I'm most interested in at this point, though, is... If, if you were going to take what I know to be a, a, not from personal experience, but just observationally, you know, a mom with three kids, one being very young, and, and yet you said you, you're married, but I know that having that, that really young kiddo, so young that you're taking them with you means that there's a lot going on there. And there must have been something pretty quickly that you saw, probably even before you started training, something you saw in your your then youngest as you were watching from the sidelines that made you say, hmm, something that you explored and that really resonated quickly. Am, am I right? There was something there because you didn't have to do this. Right, this wasn't the right. easiest path for you as in, again, new mom. Very true. Yeah, it was not the easiest path. In fact, I kind of have an MO on that trying to do the most difficult things and then feeling uncomfortable in the situation, but on the other side of it being much better for it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of that's definitely become a theme of my life. I'm, I'm constantly in that situation, but it's okay because it sets people apart who are willing to get a little uncomfortable, you mm -hmm. know, then you can achieve much more in this life. Um, but yeah, I loved that I, I could see her confidence building. And uh, like I said, she was introverted and she still is, that's her nature. And that's great. But um, I could see her confidence building and I could see um, when other kids would be interested in what she was doing. And she could talk about the belt that she just tested for and the board that she just broke and, you know, that she sparred with other kids. And that was all very shocking to people. Um, but I do feel it's super important for everybody to learn a martial arts form, but it's also specifically females, I think, need to get more interested in self-defense and uh, martial arts. I feel that um, a natural confidence comes with it when you explore that territory. Um, you no longer are have to, you know, worry about what in the world would I do in that situation? Now, there are some things that are out of your control. Sure. But do you have more confidence going into it? Are you more aware? Yes. And I think just the way you carry yourself as a female is going to show more confidence, too. And and I will touch on that as well. When I was a little girl, I was probably around oh, 11 years old or so. I remember my mom watching me walk across the room and she said, you know what, honey? You walk like a victim. 
I was like, what? <laughs> I'm just walking to the fridge. What are you talking about? <laughs> and she said, honestly, you kind of, you have your head down and you don't really make eye contact with people very much. And you, you're, you're, you're carrying yourself small and you just have a sheepish look about you. And it sounds like a terrible insult, but honestly it hit home and it was the hugest favor my mom could have given me. Um, so she had me start practicing in front of her walking across the room. She goes, okay, now shoulders back, back up, you know, you know straighten your posture. Um, now look at someone in the eye, look at me in the eye. And I want you to have some authority in the way that you look. And there's a difference between that. And of course yourself being a bully and, you know, belittling people, but just having that confidence because predators know what to look for and predators know the kind of um sheepish they're, they're gonna go for the easiest targets and so they're gonna go for someone who might not have that authority to defend themselves or that drive to you know point them out for what they're doing and in return i've been able to pass that wisdom on thanks to my mom to my daughters and so there have been some situations now. My daughters are 20, 18, and now 15. So a little time has passed. But, um, you know, there, there have been some situations where, like, my middle daughter was a waitress or a hostess, rather, at a restaurant. And some guy was hitting on her. And I said, well, what would you do? She goes, I don't know. It was, it was a little awkward at the moment. I said, okay, two things. You could either look him directly in the eye, put your finger in his face, and say, never touch me again, or don't speak to me that way, whatever the situation is, or flee, you know, you don't have to stay around in that situation. And if he continues to cat call or whatever it is to you, you ignore him. He doesn't exist. He does not deserve your communication back to him. So those are just little things. And of course, if it was a different scenario, then we could in, you know, involve some kind of physical combat, but in, you know, a hostess situation, those are probably the best two that I could think of. So yeah, it's just that confidence that I think is yeah. super important to pass down. I, I'm fascinated that this was something that your mother articulated to you. And so that that's, that's kind of my next question is, what was it about her and her understanding of the the world. I mean, because you know, you I'm doing some rough math. We're more yeah. or less the same age, so this would have been early nineties, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, thank you. Okay, <laughs> maybe a little, maybe a little earlier than that, okay. but I okay, maybe, that. maybe maybe late eighties. <laughs> yeah, I'll go the with it. <laughs> the fur the further back we go, mm -hmm. the more surprising it is to me. Right. Yeah. So, it's so a the fact that she had that awareness at that time and was willing to explain it to you at an age that was early enough that was unlikely you had needed that information yet. So your mom right. was clearly switched on. Where did that come from? Do you know? Great question. Um, yeah. So she actually did experience something as a child. And I think that that made her a stronger, more aware person than most people who have never experienced anything like that. And um, I was actually living in Japan at the time that she taught this to me. We, we were living there for a year. My dad was a professor at Baylor University and they had an exchange program. And so we lived in Fukuoka and he taught at Seinan Gakuen University and he had an interpreter. He didn't ever learn Japanese. But um, but anyway, I Fukuoka is, uh, at least at the time, didn't have many tourists at, or people living there, not like mm -hmm. Tokyo. And so um, my hair was almost platinum blonde at the time. And I was the only blonde in the whole family. My sister's brunette. Uh, everybody else has dark hair. And um, so I would get lots of attention. You got, you stood out. <laughs> and these, oh, so I'll never forget, like these sweet little old ladies would come up behind me on the bus because I would have to take the bus to school and she, they pet my hair. <laughs> So, oh, kawaii, this day, you know, talking about how cute. And uh, and so I was just like, oh, okay, we're doing that. <laughs> but I was very shy leading up through that year. And after that year, especially after my mom's coaching, 
then I started coming out of my shell and becoming more confident in who I am as a person. Um, so it was almost out of necessity that year because while we felt safe in the, in the city, we felt like there were no problems. She also wanted to look out for her youngest child who was getting all of this actual physical attention, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and not just the little old ladies, you know, there were other situations too, but um, she wanted me to make sure that I would be safe even when I was not under her little wing. So yeah, you're right. She she was unique in that, in that she taught me that at a young age and she was aware of that at a young age um, by necessity. But I forever am grateful for her for that. Yeah. And, and I imagine you pass that on to your children. Yes. Yeah. And I'm in the process too, still doing that, you know, mm. as, as they grow and evolve and new situations arrive. Um, arise. And so, yeah, it's, it's a constant thing, but I I think that they all know the importance of being a female who can hold her ground. And um, only a portion of that is actual like physical self-defense. I would say a bigger portion is how you, how you come across and do you have that confidence? Yeah. And, And we've brought this up on the show a number of times, but I think it bears repeating because not everybody pays attention to every episode. And sometimes we have new people come in. There have been experiments, psychological kind of social study experiments, where they will show video of random people to criminals. And they will ask them to pick out the one that they would go after. And they all pick the same ones. Wow. That's solidifies what she was saying, huh? And and it's and I, I think it is so critically important that we start to understand that because the, the sad part is you don't necessarily need to be, if we're thinking about it in this context, the biggest or the toughest or the most confident. You just have to not be the smallest, the weakest, the least confident. Yeah. Well, even the smallest <laughs> could Napoleon complex, right? <laughs> right. For sure. For sure. So yeah. as you started to bring your children up in and around martial arts and, and you're starting to train yourself, I would imagine this became another piece that connected into those something that clearly that 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 conversation, I bet you can imagine every detail of it. It's clear it was something very significant for you. At the time, and and you've foreshadowed a little bit in into the future as well. What was it like having that that additional skill set, that physical component of self defense that you could connect in? Yeah, well, good, um, good question. Well, okay. So my oldest, who we we actually tested for our first degree black belt at the same time. Oh, cool! Um, and at the time, she was Master So's youngest to get her black belt and mm-hmm. and so that was a neat little milestone how, how, old, um, how old was she i'm curious i'm trying to remember now um i think she might have been 10. okay wow yeah it's pretty young but she but started she, it four she, she, she yeah yeah so i didn't have her push through just super fast i you know i wanted to make sure we digested everything and and um and then and then she decided to kind of pause right there or, or you know not really pursue it and so i went on and and i continued on. But to answer that question, um, I was a Girl Scout leader also <laughs> for for my oldest daughter's troop. And um, there was an event that her school was having where they brought in all the girls, not just a Girl Scout event, but I knew I knew those girls. But anyway, brought in all the girls in her class and asked me to come in and talk about self-defense. And it was so much fun because one of the fathers of those girls was this huge man. And he um, had studied in like Krav Maga and all that and he um, was probably six seven and I ha- if I had to guess him maybe 230 pounds maybe more I'm not really good at that but, but anyway yeah, he was such a good sport because this was a moment to show girls what girls could do right mm. and so um he let me uh go through my maneuvers of what you would do to use someone's el- someone else's momentum to flip them you know subdue them and <laughs> that blew their mind <laughs> I was like you don't have to be uh, as as big as your opponent or, or attacker and um and so that was that was a pretty fun crowd pleaser and then also just some basic things where you know he would do like a choke hold and we'd you know break apart with the arms and all of that so um 
That was neat. And those are some physical things that Master So had taught me as, as a student of his, but I was able to translate and relate to these girls of how you can, a smaller person can use someone else's momentum just by some basic moves. But then I was able to also teach them some common sense awareness things, which I feel like women need to know as well in general, like don't sit in your car unlocked in a parking lot at night, checking your phone. <laughs> All you have to do is hit, you know, lock or don't even sit in your garage, you know, unlocked and checking your phone because that is super common. You know, that's actually I do that. My phone will be dinging while I'm driving and I wait until I stop and then I check it. And, you know, a few minutes goes by. But then but if you don't have your car locked, you are just bait and you're not aware. So it's super important to make those tiny little changes and even, you know, loading groceries in your grocery car, you know, look over your shoulder before you put your head in your car. <laughs> Simple things that anyone can know. You don't have to be a martial artist to know that too. So yeah, just those simple things. But yeah, to go back to your question, just just the confidence that I learned from just basic um, self-defense moves and then basic kicks and uh, punches as well uh, what helped me to be able to um, maybe send a message of confidence to these girls. Mm. So I, I want to think about that time in training. You know, you 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 test with your daughter. She's ten. Again, you've got plenty going on, mm -hmm. and this is the point in most people's story where they the parent says, "Okay, you know, the kid's out. I, I guess I'm out too." Maybe reluctantly, but logistically, it becomes cumbersome. And but not you. You kept going. Yeah. We we talked about some of the kind of the symptoms of continued training, but I'm curious about your own growth. You're if you're going that long, you strike me as someone who's fairly self-aware. What was it about who you were becoming through training that you said, I I'm not ready to let this go? I love that question because um like I had said, when I was a child growing up, I, I hadn't really pursued that one thing. And I tried many things, I hadn't really pursued it. So now I was at a point where um, it became my passion, not just uh, encouraging my daughter, okay, you know, let's, let's try to do this test, let's get to this milestone. And those things were true and existed, but now it became my passion and I had ownership in that. And I had worked out for many years and you know at a gym and and there's that and that's definitely beneficial it's actually what i do now but um but with this i had the milestones i had goals that i could obtain and i could physically see it i mean you could see your belt color changing <laughs> you see little you know marks on it tallies and um and then i got into um competing and I loved that. Uh, I did do a little bit of sparring competing, but I really got into Pumse uh, mm. forms, karate called Kata, mm -hmm. but um, in Taekwondo is Pumse. And so I really started focusing on that. And I, I won several um, national qualifiers uh, in different states. And then I actually competed in two different national championships. Uh, one in Chicago and one in San Jose the next year. So that was exciting. Um, and then I became a referee and I still competed, um, but I became a referee and nationally qualified referee. I think Master So had hopes of, of me going to the Olympics one day to be a ref because, you know, that would, that would be, we were mm. uh, Olympic certified uh, school. And um, by the way, he's from Seoul, Korea. So, you know, he, he got his, uh, levels from cookie one. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. Direct. And uh, so he's the real deal. It just honest to goodness, hardcore Korean training. And I loved it. Um, but anyway, so he, uh, where was I going with that? I love a little rabbit hole right there. Um, we were talking about why. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Significant so, for you. so it became significant for me because of course, it was nice to have the accolades and then the, you know, the medals and the trophies and all of that. But there was a sense of confidence that could not be bought. And I was able to see for the first time in my life um, what it was like to have 
a goal and obtain that goal through incredible hard work and perseverance, as I'm sure that you and every all of your listeners know that tenacity of, of you know, self-control and perseverance and indomitable spirit and all of those wonderful uh, tenets. And um, there was nobody else that could help me get there except for me. And I really understood then later in life what it was like to really um, train hard and have that amazing sense of accomplishment that comes with it. And it's not, uh, it is an individual sport, that's for sure. It's what your own, but it's also a team. Um, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten there without, you know, Master So and Master Mitchell and Master Parker. There's just a, a bunch of people who helped me along the way. And, um, then I was able to come and help other people. I became an instructor um, and I instructed children and I thought it was a phenomenal experience. There's nothing like learning what you do, uh, 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 like teaching what you do is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. It wasn't very eloquent, but that's what I'm trying to say. It's like we have to break it down and explain it. All the little angles of your foot and your hand and all of those little details that's when you really learned yourself as well mm. too so i appreciated that process and i will say this too taekwondo or martial arts in general can be for anyone i personally trained private classes a couple of different kids that had autism mm. and where they might have struggled with um a typical team sport this was an individual path and it was like nothing else I had ever seen for them. I mean, their parents were coming to me and they're like, this is amazing. My, my child is learning from you and they feel confident and there I see progression. And it's just, I feel that that should be something more spoken. Like children who might have struggle in other team sports really should consider martial arts as a very valid option. And I think it helps them in many ways too. So completely agree, you know, yeah. and, you know, we've been fortunate enough, we've had folks come on the show who talk about, you know, wh whether it's autism spectrum, and, and my understanding is that term starting to fall out of favor. The the point being that special classes, you know, sometimes it's a class of folks of similar learning style, right? And sometimes it's one-on-one. -on -one and and there, I don't think there's anything more adaptable because of the individual nature that mm -hmm. we've been talking about than martial arts. Right. Um, th there's a, there's a piece here and I'm, if, if you're not okay with this, you know, I'll, we'll, we'll edit it, but there's a piece to this equation that we haven't touched on. And I'm curious, and that's your husband and what his thoughts were about all of this. Okay. Yeah. I'm totally great with talking about this. All right. Well, here's, here's the funny thing. Here's the punchline. Um, I actually am divorced from that husband and I'm remarried. My but gut told me that. Right. Okay. Here's, here's the punchline though. No matter what you're going through in your personal life, it is important to have that one thing that you can focus on in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of people, everybody has a trial. Everybody has something that they're eventually going to go through. And it depends, you know, the question is, how are you dealing with it? <laughs> are you turning to substances? Are you curling up in bed and not getting out of bed? Or are you walking on the mat and kicking and punching and yelling and focusing on a new skill? That helped me. And, um, you know, my, my ex and I are fine. There's no problems. It's just that, yeah, we did move on. And so um, we're both remarried. And But that was such a healthy way for me to get through that time. I had started martial arts before I had going, gone through that path, but I cannot express how, how valuable that was. It was a gift that was given to me that I didn't know was coming. You know, mm -hmm. I was already on that path and then life happened and here I was, and I didn't, I didn't veer from the course. I just probably dove in a little bit more. I mean, I was still with my kids and they were with me on the mat running around and I would teach a class and they'd be running around. And, um, but it was, it was just a healthy way. And there's something about physically kicking and punching and yelling that really helps you get rid of stress and angst 
and all of that, you know, we've always heard, you know, go find a pillow and scream or whatever. Well, no, get on the mat, go do something healthy and get a skill while you're at it and maybe get some confidence and, you know, feel, feel like a, like you can handle the world. <laughs> So that helped me. I am, I am remarried and I did move out of state because mm -hmm. of that. And so the only sad part is that I had to say goodbye to Master So and my Dojong and all of my wonderful ladies that I trained with and the students that I taught and um, all of the great masters there. So that was sad. It really was because you have such a devotion to your original <laughs> master, which I know everybody feels that way. And I'm sure there were great people here. I just never found it. So um, it is a chapter in my life that um, sadly has has come to a, a close, but I maintain my fitness level uh, mm -hmm. with going to the gym and, but I look back fondly on it and I mm -hmm. will continue to endorse it. <laughs> well, my, my advice, if I may, mm -hmm. um, don't try to do Taekwondo again, try to do something completely different. Mm -hmm. So you're less likely to compare, you know, when I have conversations with yeah. folks and they look for what they had, but you'll never find what you had it's always going to be a little different. So instead of being frustrated at a little different, just lean into it and go completely different. That's actually a great idea. Thank you. You're welcome. Maybe I will. You have to interview me in a year and see what that's, happens. That's right. Well, you know, I, I, heck, I, I might jot this down and I might send you some, <laughs> some pokey email. Say, what, what, you look for right, a what are you doing? Oh, no. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so... Part, part of our conversation today is around a bit of a specific subject. And I think that we've kind of laid the groundwork here, you know, that you, you might want to take it and kind of run with it. There, there's something, there's a piece in here that's really important to you. And I want to make sure that we, we jump in with both feet. Um, are you talking about, you're not talking about martial arts anymore? Or what are we talking about? From the, from the notes that I have here, maybe I'm misreading. Because that. I did start a new chapter of my life, if that's yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. that's, that's, okay. that's. So this is interesting because it's a completely different chapter that probably nobody would have guessed. Um, I never pursued um, being any school plays or any anything like that. I had no lofty ideas of getting into the acting world. Um, I will go ahead and throw Master So a bone on this one. I remember I was a white belt and he was showing us how to do the different pumse, the different forms and the yells and all of that that was in, in, entailed in that. And he said, you know, on testing day, we're going to be doing these in front of people. Eventually I got on the demo team. So that was kind of part of it. But anyway, he says, it's like acting. And I'm like, that's interesting. He said, yeah, I mean, you you want your yell, your your movements and everything to it's to, to show the audience what you can do. Mm -hmm. And that blew my mind. I was like, you wouldn't think of Taekwondo as acting, but especially when you got on the demo team, I mean, it is. It's showing them what you can do in an entertaining way. And it, I mean, the kids, at least the kids are like, wow, it's so cool. And it, so it kind of is acting. And I don't know if that might have placed a little something in my head, but um, as I was transitioning out of um, uh, where I lived at the time in Oklahoma and coming to Arkansas and the divorce had already happened, I had a family member that was teaching an acting class. And I literally kind of like just me going on the mat on that one Saturday, trying out a class. It's kind of the same thought here. I was like, I'll just walk into this class and just see what it's about. You know, no lofty ideas at all. And I did. And I got bit by the bug, as I typically do, I guess. <laughs> And I thought, you know, this is a skill set. This is an amazing, that wasn't, that's not a surprise, of course, it's a skill set, but it really is. Like, you have no idea what goes on in, in the training to get the actor to that point. Um, obviously, they're good at what they do, but there's so much training that goes into that. And so a part of my brain was very intrigued. And so I decided to pursue it. And I treated it like a serious subject. And I started researching everything I could. I started taking every class I possibly could. Um, I was fortunate enough to have an agent sign me on and um, now and then a second agent too. And I have one in LA now. So that's nice. 
Right. And so this is, this is something that I'm just letting God be in control of, you know, mm -hmm. because it's a completely competitive industry, obviously. Um, and so I'm just letting him open the doors that he wants to be open. And I'm letting him close the doors that should be closed. I definitely have my boundaries. Uh, as you know, there's all kinds of things that can go on in this industry. So I definitely have my boundaries. And I know that that is going to possibly limit me. And um, certain people think that, that that's crazy to kind of go into with that mindset. You should just take everything. No, I, I don't want to because I've given this career over to God. And so I figure he's going to open the ones that need to be open, close the ones that need to be closed and take me where I need to go. Mm. In the meantime, I want to be competitive. I want to be trained up and ready. There's a lot of coincidence. There's a lot of similarities here mm. with martial arts too. And so I'm taking it like a discipline that I need to focus on. I need to be a hundred percent focused and in the moment and um, be prepared before I even step onto that set or step onto the mat earlier. You know, there's a lot of parallels that I have found. And um, I, I, I find it extremely exciting. I just was on a fun film set this last weekend in Oklahoma. I actually go back every now and then and cool. different states as well. And it was, it was a very enjoyable experience. I really loved it. Um, and I broke three nails trying to open up this 1970s pickup truck door, <laughs> which you have to get from the inside. And and, it, <laughs> and the cameras are rolling and my character couldn't open it sometimes. <laughs> so I went with it. I was like, oh, this stupid door. You know, and I got the door open finally. I was like, okay, you know, hazards of the, the trade. But anyway, so it's it was just a lot of fun. And my point is, I did that late in life too. I've only been acting for about uh, six years now and um, doors are starting to open. Things are getting exciting. I don't know how far I'll get, but I'm along for the ride. And um, so I started martial arts later in life. I started acting way later in life. And as long as I have breath on this life, I will just keep on engaging in these um, opportunities and doing the best that I can and just see where See where I'm taken. <laughs> I love it. Now I'm I'm curious. Compare for us the the high, if you will, of competition, and you know finishing finishing your form in front of the referees and and what that feels. I know what that feels like. I know it's it's a high. It is it is incredible. Uh, versus maybe seeing yourself. during playback of yeah. of film right like seeing seeing that scene knowing that you nailed it versus knowing you nailed that form good question um well the high of martial arts performance and you know competition I would say that has to be a little higher because it involves like the endorphins and the, mm. the well, no, it's so, so does acting. Goodness. That's mm -hmm. a good question. You stumped me. Um, <laughs> okay. I might have to say it's about equal, but so different. Mm -hmm. um, with, with Taekwondo, you could almost compare that more to theater acting. Um, I'm not a theater actress. I was never trained in it. I have respect for those people because that's an instant. You hear an instant gratification or, or you have an instant gratification from your performance. Maybe they're gasping, maybe they're laughing, maybe they're booing, whatever it is, but you have that instant. And with Taekwondo and your competitions, obviously you instantly have that. So you have that satisfaction, your endorphins are going and, you know, um, that that might be more equated to that with film. It's quite different because you might know, not know, you know, how it was received for months down the road. <laughs> what I can equate to is feedback from the director, the screenwriter, people who are on set watching you. Mm -hmm. uh, in this last weekend, I had the, the director come to me and it's just the smallest thing, but in my little world, it just meant everything. He just said, you're really nailing it. <laughs> One little thing. I'm like, thanks. And, um, but you know, I don't, I don't know what that looks like. I still have, I, I probably won't see what it looks like for months down the road. And then as I was leaving set, the, the screenwriter was there too. And he said, I got to tell you, you and your co-star have taken these characters to new levels that I never even imagined as a writer. Mm. And that was a huge, huge compliment. 
So yeah, those, those little verbal compliments are awesome. When you're on the stage, I mean, not stage, but when you're on set, you kind of know if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're doing a good job or not. Um, but the beauty of film is that they can call cut and roll again <laughs> in theater, you know, they don't have that luxury. So that's why it's pretty impressive that those people can do that. Um, and to, yeah. to continue the, the comparison, pardon me for stepping on you there. How do you know you're doing a good job? You can feel it, right? You in can the same feel way, it. We, we've all, I mean, whether or not we, because not all of us enjoy forms. I mm -hmm. do. I absolutely love forms. I can feel it when it's going well. I can yeah. feel when it's that one out of 10, one out of 20, one out of 100 that just, I just got something right. And you just run with it. And sometimes yeah. you're not even running with it. Sometimes it's running with you and you're just yeah. along for the ride. Yeah. You know, and that's a really good question because a lot of it has to do with your mental focus. So if, if, for example, if I'm auditioning and a lot nowadays because the, the pandemic and um, all of that, a lot of it's self-tape audition. So I will mm -hmm. audition with my own camera and my own ring light and all my stuff and then send it off and they get to see it. But I can tell when my head's not in it and I hit stop, <laughs> delete that one. Let's do it again. And I can just tell. So your mind as an actor has to be in the moment. So, for example, if the scene is, you know, I'm, I'm sad about X, Y, Z. Well, I might have not ever experienced that particular situation, but I've been upset about something else before. And it's like a substitution moment. And if you really, really focus your physical demeanor, your expressions, your body will 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 express that message to your audience. In your head, you might be thinking about this other sad thing, but your body has memory and your body is showing that emotion and that's believable. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, with Taekwondo and, and doing forms and I've, I've been there too. I'm like, oh, it's not so great. And, and then the next time you're like, man, I nailed that. It's, it all comes down to focus. And, you know, are you, are you only thinking about this right now? Or are you thinking about what you're going to make for dinner that night? <laughs> mm -hmm. Big difference in your performance. Right. And so, yeah, there would be a, the similarity to that and all comes down to, to, to focus and being in the moment, being in that moment is super important. Now I'm, I'm curious, generally I ask questions when I have a gut feeling this one's coming out of nowhere. At some point, I'm sure you've worked with acting coaches and oh, yeah. there are different schools of, of acting, uh, theory, education, et cetera. Are there things that you've learned from your acting that were you to step back into a competition ring, you've thought, you know what, this would inform the way I practice for competition or uh, show up to competition? Are there things from that that maybe the audience hasn't heard before you could share? Right. Uh, well, yeah, a lot of it would be like the focus, but I remember before getting my, before testing day back in Taekwondo, they'd say, today's just a formality, like your black belt testing. Today's a formality. Your real testing was all the time up to now, like your training, how you showed up, your, your, you know, tenants and how yeah. how you carried yourself and how you treated others and your discipline and all of that all of the training all the ball of everything that it takes to get to that moment is the important part the day of sure it's important but it's a formality same thing with acting i can't just walk on set you know green <laughs> cra crashing the night i mean just cramming the night before my script and like i don't know i have to make all my character choices ahead of time i have to s decide who what when where why about this character even if nobody else knows the backstory that i created for my character i know it and it makes me more believable when i um express that on film and so it's all of the training i uh, you know if you stop training, you stop progressing. So even if one day you see me on the big screen, great, I'm still going to train. I'm still going to learn. I'm still going to add knowledge to my belt <laughs> to mix metaphors, whatever. But, um, but yeah, I, 
I have to be ready before I step on that set because the set is great and super important, but I will have done everything ahead of that time. And that's going to make all the difference. Mm. And you're no longer thinking about the words. You're no longer thinking about, that's how well you know it. You're no longer thinking about the script. Now it's a matter of listening to your uh, co-star and reacting, but not acting. You're having an actual conversation because you know the words so well that I might not know that you're going to do something in a certain way. And that's going to evoke another emotion from me. And now we're all of a sudden real people quote unquote, real, <laughs> real people having a real conversation that happens to be scripted and being filmed, but we're in the moment. And it's super fascinating to me. I actually am more interested in the psychology behind acting, you know, than anything. I'm, I'm interested in acting, but remember I said I started out in marketing. I realized when I became a stay at home mom and I had transitioned out of that full-time career that I was most interested in the psychology behind marketing mm. because I love what makes people choose what they choose. I love knowing, you know, what makes people tick? Why do people do things, you know, and, and what can we do to, to further that behavior? I think that's fascinating. And so that's probably one reason why I became super interested in acting is I was like, Oh my goodness, there is a whole, study here on, um, you know, what makes a good actor and, and what has to go on psychology wise. And, and it's fascinating. It's pretty fascinating. Nice. Yeah. Now we've, we've connected those two dots, mm -hmm. but I think there's a third dot and it's the third dot that we really talked about. And it's that conversation that your mom had with you at 11, because she was teaching you to act. And I don't know if you've thought about it in that way, but I'm I'm seeing this arc of you as an actor because you you said, oh, sparring. I sparred a few times, but I loved forms. It's acting, right? And so I'm seeing this arc through your life of you through acting, growing. And it's it's fascinating to me. And I'm wondering if you've ever considered it in that way. Honestly, no. You just connected the third dot in my life so I can call it a day. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'll send you I'll send you the bill. Martial arts therapy. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love that. That's that's pretty pretty uh, insightful of you actually. And it's it's surprising how much of life actually is acting. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that it's not genuine. It doesn't mean that. It just means sometimes you have to force yourself out of your comfort zone to achieve a certain goal. And that definition right there might be acting. Doesn't mean it's fake. It means, okay, well, I feel like curling up in bed. No, I need to push myself out of this comfort area and achieve something. And in, when I was 11, it was, okay, fine. I need to act like I'm confident. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> and I need to act like, I know what I'm talking about. I was the youngest too. And there's something that comes with being the youngest that makes you like, sure. oh, people around me can take care of it. And, you know, people just give me what I need. And so I was kind of forced out of that. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely a leader now. I Thankfully, I didn't tell you this, but um, in Arkansas, I was um, voted as the president of women in film in Arkansas. Cool. So that's a lot of fun. <laughs> And it was funny because I was I was uh, voted as that position about a year and a half ago. And I thought, are you sure? I mean, I've only been acting for like at the time, four and a half years. Um, I didn't say that out loud. I thought that in my brain. And but they knew that they knew that I hadn't been in there forever. But really, if you force yourself in, in you know, whatever situation it is and embrace it and try really hard, then you can really accomplish most anything. And so I have thoroughly enjoyed this position and I plan to keep going for a little while. And I have a wonderful board of people who help me. And, um, you know, our, our focus, we're a nonprofit organization. Our focus is education. And so I'm just, you know, bringing in workshops, bringing in experts in different facets of the film industry and 
educating not only our women, but men too. I started a branch for men supporting women in film Arkansas, which is really fun. Cool. And um, so it's for anybody. And I just want our state to be ready as we get more productions coming in. And as people get jobs in other states, you know, I want, I want Arkansas to be ready. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's an example of something that was um, another example where I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm equipped. And then I did it and it's going extremely well. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. But um, yeah, great. you're right. And I guess I acted it and now I'm it. <laughs> it it's, I, I think it's, it's all, if you look at acting as you, you brought this up before, kind of referring back to past experiences, maybe you haven't been in that exact circumstance, but you're still pulling information from what you've done, who you've been with, who you've known, et cetera. And if, mm -hmm. if that is acting, then everything we're doing is acting. I haven't been in this moment before. I've, I've never talked to you before at this moment, at this time with this conversation. So I'm referring back to other episodes and other people and, and you're doing the exact same thing. And So true. That's a good point. It, it takes a little bit of faith that I know from the past that I can handle myself in situations. I should be able to handle myself in this one. <laughs> Right. It takes a little bit of faith. And but there's a little ounce of scariness of the unknown, but it really separates those for those who do things in life and accomplish noteworthy things from those who don't is the people who are willing to step into those tiny bit scary situations um, and the unknown and just have faith and confidence in their own abilities from the past to be able to handle abilities in the future. So I think that that's super important and that's a great takeaway in life for anyone. You know, it's okay. It's okay to be a little scared. It's, a, it's okay to not know what this situation is going to be like exactly. And somehow you're probably gonna be okay. And most times you are, <laughs> thankfully. Yeah, uh, I every time I ask sort of a speculative question. And we've had three or four of them today. And most episodes that we record, I'm asking something that you're using the word faith. There's just a voice in the back of my head saying, there's something here if you ask about this. Mm -hmm. And every time I ask that question, I'm nervous because once in a while I'm wrong. Once in a while, the guest looks at me and goes, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and I have to just really quickly pivot and we just go on to something else right away. But usually, most of the time, my gut is right and it opens a door. Yeah. And I think that that is something that is true for all of us. And I, I think it is so hardwired into martial arts. You know, from day one, it's it's completely foreign and you never quite get that back. It's all weird and strange. Yeah. And once you've been training, you know, maybe 20, 30 years. Yeah. You, you start to be comfortable with the foreign nature of it. But how comfortable are you? Go go put on a white belt and go to a different school. You're probably going to have that same experience, which suggests we never quite get out of that. But in almost every other area of life. We most of us shy away from that. But then again, as martial artists, if we can embrace it, if we can turn it into an acting career or who knows what else. There's a lot of really cool stuff on the other side. Yeah. Sky's the limit. I mean, right. I just happen to be in acting, but there's lots of different avenues. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. You think, think you'll ever do martial arts on camera? I actually originally thought that I would go down that path. Um, <laughs> it's just a little slower process to get into the acting world than, you sure. know, I mean, it's it's not on that timeline, but um, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it. I think that that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, this week, I actually have a really cool thing coming up where I'm going to be making a new reel and it's going to be showing me in different demographics. And uh, the director was willing to do me in like a martial arts scenario. Only problem is I'm nursing a little bit of an injury. And I was like, Dang oh, it, wait. <laughs> Till next time, but um, but I, I'm definitely open to it. Yeah, I think nice. that'd be a lot. And you know, my sister, my sister does, of course, taekwondo. Except she's she's um kind of the situ same situation I am too. She's she's not training any longer. But the director found out that she did. He was like, "Oh, I guess this is amazing. We're gonna have to get you guys together and <laughs> oh, that's great. That's stimulate, great. market it." And uh, and I haven't told her yet, though. I should probably tell her. <laughs> <laughs> she at least needs to know when to report to set. 
Right, exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's it's great if we watch over the last few years, and I'm trying to remember the name of the film, but we're we're starting to see, you know, women, you know, because the line used to be like 30 for women. It wasn't that long ago. And that line is just getting dragged out so fast right now. There was a yeah. movie I watched on Netflix and it really wasn't a martial arts film, but it was an action film. And the protagonist was a, a, a woman playing, I mean, she is in her late fifties, early sixties. And the character she was playing was in her sixties. And it was, I mean, they were not pulling punches. This was a hardcore action film. It was awesome. And wow. it just, to me, it was proof that we've, we finally figured some of this stuff out that it can, it can work. Right. I would love to know what that is. That's uh, awesome. I'll, what, once, once we wrap here, I'll look it up. <laughs> You'll yeah. Look it up. yeah. I'll put yeah. it in the show notes. No, I, I agree. And it, it's, it's no longer just a young person's field. And, and, and that is true for, for martial arts as well, especially if you're really focused on the, the forms. I mean, you can mm -hmm. do that in your eighties. And I remember master. So used to say, it's really great for saving off dementia, you know, anything mm -hmm. that you're doing that keeps, you know, a, a memorization and, and you're tying that into your body physically, that's phenomenal for the brain. And, yes. and I also like to translate that to acting too, because I have to memorize large chunks of scripts at, at, mm. in a short amount of time. And there's tricks, you know, to help me do that too, but it's keeping me on my toes. It's keeping me, you know, functioning. And, um, but yeah, back to the age thing. I mean, as long as Meryl Streep's still alive, I think that's that, that age is going to be pushed and pushed and pushed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. 90 year old lady, leading lady. I think that'd be awesome. But it's, all, yeah. all the better for it. Mm -hmm, definitely. The world is better for it, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if we, let's say we reconnect in 10 years, we bring you back on the show, we do a part two. What would you hope you would be telling me about what's transpired in the 10 years? Okay. Well, right now, since my focus is more acting, I hope I'll have some fun things to tell you about, and maybe you'll already know about them. That would be awesome. <laughs> and even if I don't get back into martial arts per se, maybe I will, um, I want to have maintained physical fitness because I really do think, you know, mind, spirit, body is, is at the core of humanity and success in in every way um and so i want to um definitely be able to say that i'm i'm still active and i'm watching what i eat and and all of those good things and so hopefully in, in 10 years i will have reached some fun acting milestones and um just continuing to live life as healthily and uh, fulfilling fulfillingly as i can there we go <laughs> It works. It works. Fulfilled? I don't know. <laughs> we know what you meant. Yes. What are your final words to the audience? How do you want to leave this today? Um, well, first of all, it has been a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Jeremy. And um, your producer, Andrew, I appreciate it. And I just want to say that um, age, gender, uh, shouldn't prohibit you from starting something new. Um, I specifically think that martial arts is wonderful and um, it doesn't matter which form necessarily. Mine happened to be Taekwondo, which of course I love. Uh, but as long as you find the thing that uh, you're, you're pleased with your master and the location and the practice, stick to it because it's going to get hard. <laughs> mm. And if you have children uh, and they say, this is hard, I don't want to do it, push them a little bit, push them a little bit to, you know, stick with it. And I think that those um, traits will help them in life. It will help them with perseverance, with a hard job, a hard relationship, of course, school, a uh, hard relationship, any, any kind of thing that's worthwhile is going to lose its shininess, newness, and it's going to get hard. And so keep that in mind and teach that to your children. And um, and then as an adult, it's okay. It's not too late. Even if you have never pursued a specific um, path, and even if you've had your children and you feel like you're out of shape and it's just, you know, you're just, oh, hum, there's nothing going on. No, it's not too late start slow and you can start seeing progress. The, the point is, are you going to stick with it? Are you going to be disciplined? Are you going to have that self-control? And 
maybe, um, you know, have one less sweet treat and one more glass of water and go to bed a little earlier, wake up a little, wake up a little earlier too. And those little changes you can make even way later in life and start seeing drastic, quick benefits. So I would like to say to men, women, children of every age, um, that it is never too late and to find something and stick to it and really uh, pursue it and then also try to to give back to others um, whether it's the indirect yourself or a little bit you know befriend them get out of your comfort zone and i don't think about it where they're sink and and you just might be the the cool black belt kid that you know befriends the kid that nobody talks to and that could mean the world to them so yeah it's a lot that you can do with that during the intro i mentioned that this was an interesting story, one that we had not told. And what I love about it is if we, if we take a look at the way that Becky talked about her time as a martial artist, we could look in hindsight and say she was an actor. We can look back at that, that pivotal moment that she talked about multiple times that I kept coming back to because I felt so uh, compelled in the way she talked about it the first time. She was an actor, and here she is now, an actor. I don't know about you, but there have been moments where I've done forms, and I know not all of you do forms, but when I've been doing forms, and they feel really good, and it feels like I'm, I'm truly embodying that battle that I'm supposed to be simulating, that's acting. And I can only imagine that moving from being someone who's passionate about forms and, and decent at it to acting, that there's a carry over there. There's a benefit. I'm not suggesting that all of you go out and become actors, but if you want to go for it, I am suggesting that here's yet another example of where our martial arts training comes back into life and not always in the way that we think about. It. So Becky, Kevin and Barkley, thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for being so open. Thanks for uh, letting me, me guess and, and uh, running into some of those corners with me as we had our conversation. I had a really good time. I wish you luck in your career and look forward to watching your IMDb profile grow. Audience, check out her profile. We've got it linked in the show notes. Check out everything that we've got going on. Check out all the things that we have at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Maybe you loved this episode and you think, you know, have there been other actors on the show? Yeah, there have been. You could search the word actor and you're going to come up with a bunch of people. Okay. If you love what we do, if you appreciate what we do, please consider supporting us in any of the multitude of ways that we mentioned over the course of this show. If you're a school owner, the number one thing I can suggest, because it's in both of our best interest, hire me as your consultant for less than you think with a far greater impact than you think. I can help you grow your school. The very principles that I have put into martial arts radio and whistle kick overall, integrity, discipline, et cetera, are the things that I bring into consulting. And it's why I am successful with businesses in and out of the martial arts. Okay, just reach out, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. If you're not a school owner, totally fine. Help us out in some other way, or maybe talk about this with your instructor. You could also consider having us in, me, maybe some of my Whistlekick friends, Andrew, et cetera, for a seminar. We'd love to come visit you. We can make it work. Just reach out, jeremywhistlekick.com. Our social media, whatever platform you're on, find us, at Whistlekick. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.